feel it to love the center here today uh, as we begin to look into uh, the scripture that's been selected for our consideration today. Uh, I believe that God has given a timely message for such a time as this. All right. Uh, simply because many of us at some point in time has dealt with this thing called low self-esteem. Uh, low self-esteem is very dangerous because when a person suffers from low self-esteem, uh, it's generally because of the hand of what somebody else has placed on their life. Okay. Right. Folk tell you the way you look is not appropriate. They tell you the way you think is just not right. Uh, the way you dress is not appropriate. Uh, where you live is nothing. Uh, the thing you do are nothing and most of the time we live life trying to live up to somebody else's standard. Yes, wow. uh, low self-esteem is dangerous because the enemy understands that if he can ever get you to look at your life as not having any value then it's a possibility you will miss God that has valued the life inside of yeah. you. It's very interesting to me that most of the time, those folk who come against your character, come against your nature, come against you and who you are, most of the time, those individuals don't have very much going on in their own lives. Uh, they only come to belittle you in such a way that they don't look so bad up against who you are. You got to be very careful how you allow folk to run and walk in your circle because everybody that's by your side is not on your side and everyone that's kneeling for you ain't praying for you. That's why we have to be very selective and very careful how we let folk enter into our circle because they might just be damaging to our circle in the end of time. You have to be very strategically and very careful how you allow folks to be placed into your life because when folk are placed into your life you got to first of all do one and two things first of all you have to ask yourself what is it that you can offer them but then you need to be asking what is it that they bring to you because at the end of the day I don't need to be with folk that don't mean me no good but I I need to be with somebody that can help me up out of the trenches to help me become a better me as I help them become a better them because God is trying to do something in all of us. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you got to understand your value. It's hard. It, it is difficult for us as, as human beings to try uh, to be all that we can be when, when folk are in our ears trying to tell us what we're not. Uh, just because I don't measure up to your standard don't mean that I'm nothing in God's eye. Just because I don't measure up to your standard does not mean that I'm not all that I can be. Because at the end of the day, it's not your standard I need to be measuring up to. But it's God's standard I need to be measuring up to. And here we find in Genesis, after God has created all and everything, he decides that he wants now to create man. Uh, he said it like this in Genesis 1, 27. Hell, 26, he says, let us make man in our own image and our likeness. Created he male and female. But when you get to Genesis 2 and 7, it says that God looked now at nothing and decided that when he got ready to create, he would take what we call this thing dirt and form this dirt and shape mankind and breathe into the nostrils of man that man can become a living soul. And every time I think about this thing, I have to ask God a question because after all, God, you could have made me out of a ruby. After all, God, you could have made me out of a diamond. After all, God, you could have took sapphire and made me something great. But why would God take the dirt and breathe into the nostrils? 
clothes of man. Why would God take dirt and form man in order for man now to become a living soul? Yeah. Might I suggest the only reason why God used the dirt was simply to keep us mindful that no matter where we go in life, or no matter how high we get, at one point in time we all started from the dirt of the ground. That's why when you leave this earth, nobody says, there go brother so-and-so who had a million dollar bank account, lived in a five-star mansion, drove a flashy car. We could make him back to the ground from whence he come. What we do declare over you at the end of your time is that from earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. In other words, from dirt you erupted from, and dirt you're going to return. Look at somebody and say, it don't matter how you dress, it don't matter how educated you are, it don't matter how much you flow in your blue. I wish I could preach it again. But at the end of the day, we all came from dirt, and dirt we all gonna return, because I've never seen a U-Haul truck behind a hearse at the end of the day. But what God treasures and what he's more valuable in is the soul that's on the inside. That's why he breathed into the nostrils of man that man can become a living soul. It's no matter how I dress up on the outside. What matters is how I look on the inside. That's why you got to be careful how you let folk on the inside of you. Because you might let folk on the inside of you and they might become more damaging to you. In other words, be careful how you let folk inside of your mind. Because folk will get inside of your head and have you twisted and messed up and screwed up from the flow of. Look at your neighbor tell your neighbor. I'd be a lot better off if I hadn't let that Negro get inside my head. Thinking that he was all that in a bag of chips. And when he walked out the door, I walked out with him because he messed up my mind. I must have been crazy thinking that 36, 34, 36 was all of that. Because when she walked out the door, she messed up my mind. Look at your neighbor in this place and tell your neighbor, you got to be careful how you let folk get inside of you. Because they just might be on assignment from the enemy to mess you up. Uh, watch this, watch this. Uh, uh, God, God, God has created everything. Uh, everything at this time has been created. Uh, and when he decides to create, uh, I know that he goes to the depth of the ground uh, and take the dust of the ground uh, and he shakes his creation. Uh, but I thank God uh, that when he shaked us, uh, he did not stop right there. Uh, but he comes around now uh, and he on me or in me a breath of life which means that every morning I wake up the breath, the breath of God is breathing on me that's why you get through every trial and every tribulation come to declare that God is breathing on you that's why you can make it over every mountain and through every valley because God is breathing on you I thought of your neighbor and tell your neighbor that's been some time in my life that I've been up and I've been down but by God's grace and his mercy he keeps breathing on me is there anybody in the house today can tell the Lord thank you for breathing on me and if God keeps breathing on me I can run on and see what the end is going to be I get happy when I think about the goodness of Jesus and how he was, it turned into something, and that something became a living movement soul. It's in him that I move and have my very being. It's in him that I move and have my very existence. I am what I am, all because of him. And I ask the Lord 